What's going on guys? Noah here with Northern Scavenger. I'm arguably in the canoe mecca of Canada, Tamagami, Ontario. This area has 4,700 kilometers of canoe routes with four of Ontario's largest peaks. It's also home to an apex predator that we have a crazy experience with, and it's full of old growth forests that make fires a big concern. So it's rugged, wild terrain, and I'm out here with my long lost brother, Alex. The last time we were here was about nine years ago, and it's where we really cut our teeth in wilderness canoe tripping. Over the next 10 days, we get to paddle 200 kilometers through the heart of Tamagami on three major rivers. But to pull this off, we need to portage over 25 kilometers. We get to see three different rivers, potentially have some incredible fishing opportunities. Dude. There's gonna be a ton of waterfalls. It's definitely not gonna be shy of uh, a lot of work for us, but I think it's gonna reward us on the other end. We're starting this trip on the hottest day of the route, which is, it feels like about 40 degrees. So we left Toronto this morning, drove up to Tamagami, which is about five, six hours, and then put in about a solid half day we didn't eat lunch just because we were so excited and we just wanted to be on the water. So by the time we got to camp tonight, we were pretty exhausted. When it's so hot, it just drains you. First night, it's in the books. It's gonna be a good trip. Also, these dragonflies are insane. A rock bass. <laughs> I haven't got a rock bass in like over 10 years. <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot about these guys. That's cool. It's gonna be another hot, hot day. It's already felt that feeling of like dry heat. So we gotta make sure we hydrate a lot today, especially during the middle of the day when it gets scorching hot. I'm gonna get on the water early today and just make some distance while it's a little cool. That portage ended up being way more of a bog than either of us were expecting. There's nothing that makes you feel more wilderness than sinking up to your knee in some fresh mud. It's like ripping off a band-aid. It is so hot. We're entering the Lady Evelyn River. As soon as we got in here, we started seeing cliffs, dramatic landscapes. We're going up the Lady Evelyn. Nine years ago, 
Alex and I went down it. So it's gonna be interesting if we remember any of the spots. our way up the Lady Evelyn River and it got shallow enough that it's just easier to walk. We already skipped one portage by doing this and one of my favorite things about canoeing is skipping portages. We're in a bit of a canyon now, and there's a portage sign here, right beside this like really steep scree, and there's a billy goat path right beside the waterfall. Both don't look fun. going right right across and then up we, we go through the middle V there's, there's not a ton of water going through it but I think there'd be slippery rocks that we could just slide through okay it's nearing the end of the day and we opted to skip uh, a pretty long portage by taking a bit of a blue line it's always a hope that your decisions result in less effort spent. So uh, we're gonna cut our losses. We try working up the river. Uh, not the right move, we should just portage. So... That was fun. a beautiful waterfall that we're portaging around right now. We were really hoping that that campsite was gonna be available. Now, we're gonna have to push on a little further and it's getting late, sun's setting, which means we're not gonna have much time at camp tonight. But absolutely beautiful areas that we're, we're getting to travel through here. It's 7.30. We're approaching a well-known spot, Cabin Falls. This is where Hap Wilson, renowned author and Canadian canoeist, has an eco lodge. There's apparently a campsite nearby. Crossing our fingers, it's not already taken. These portages have been quite the elevation gain. Campsite. There you go. And there's wood. Dude, that was <laughs> <laughs> not world class. No. Adding some freeze-dried cheese, some freeze-dried cheddar to our moonlit mountain chili packs for dinner tonight. So you guys might not know this, but Alex is getting married 
this April. So this is a, a brother bachelor party before the bachelor party that's happening in a, in a couple weeks. So I brought some bachelor juice. <laughs> <laughs> What's bachelor juice? We're gonna have to try it out to see. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's not Forty Creek. I had to put it in this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we have bachelor juice on the nice. tamagami. Uh, Alex. Heck yeah. Take a swig of the that's bachelor hilarious. juice. You can't have this once you're married, though. Okay. Oh my gosh. What is that? Ah, it's bachelor juice, man. You'll never guess. So we started there and went up through Klutz to Willow Island, down into the Lady Evelyn, Fat Man Falls, Bridal Vale, Cabin. That was a long day. He was having dinner now. It's probably getting close to nine o'clock. In the last few kilometers, we hit three waterfalls. Absolutely gorgeous. Portages were incredibly tough. A lot of work. <laughs> I know today was a hard day. We worked, for, we worked hard for it, but this is so good. So hearty too. There's so much. A lot of fresh flavors in there. I need to know what that underlying flavor is. My hip flexors are very sore this morning from all the climbing yesterday. It's gonna be a tough start to the day today for sure, carrying wise. I don't think I'm ready to get back into the portage regiment yet. Today we're gonna to get to the spot where Alex and I paddled nine years ago, all the way to where we started that trip. So it's gonna be a pretty nostalgic day. It'll be really interesting if we remember any of the spots. We're going through a stretch of the Lady Evelyn River that's really tight and full of rapids. And if we can't line them, there's about eight portages back to back to back through here that we have to do this afternoon. I cannot believe the blueberries. I know, it's crazy, eh? <laughs> that was just like a quick handful. To complete this route, we have to do about 22 kilometers a day. And yesterday, it took us about 12 hours to do that 22 kilometers. So we have our work cut out for us, for sure. When we did this trip way back in the day, we we're pretty green and white water, and this set, we were super scared about making this this elbow right here. What did you jump in? Yeah. It's it's risky. Too much on this side, the entire thing's gonna go. We we're planning on going that way, but it was a, there's a chance of us tipping because of this pushing water. So we just pulled it along the shore here. The Lady Evelyn was the first real remote whitewater you ever had to navigate. And the memories really started to flow back here. Every set had a story, and it was a joy to relive those. Portage, portage, line, portage. <laughs> oh, bushwhack. That wasn't the portage, just kidding. <laughs> this was the first campsite of the trip, and I can still taste that fireball and those feelings of giddiness that we had from embarking on our first big adventure. We love exploring new places, but coming back to these old ones definitely stirs up the emotion.
We're having perch fillets tonight. Also, I'm officially not skunked on this trip. See you, bud. Yeah, I'm so down for this if you are. Yeah, I'm down. Yo, the thing about rest days is like, well, I guess if you, all you need to do is plan a rest day into the trip. Yeah. We brought out some books with some information on this route. And I found out one of my dry bags is not completely dry anymore. So we gotta, we gotta dry this guy out. bowls. Wow. Thank you, Dave. Dave's on a trip, probably as we speak right now, in Labrador. He made a bunch of food and dehydrated a bunch of extra for his friends to take on their trips. And I think that's a great way to, that's a great present for a backcountry person. Dehydrated meal. <laughs> that's actually an awesome gift idea for a backcountry person. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Today, we have a bit of a doozy of a day. When I was planning this trip, I drew a line using Cal Topo to, to create a route, trying to find connections between lakes. And after the route was planned and we were getting excited about it, I looked at the profile, which shows you the elevation gain. And there is a bit of an anomaly on the, on the plot. And I thought maybe I had messed up with my line drawing. And it turns out I didn't. So today we have a very long portage between Gamble Lake and Sunny Water Lake. So then how, how long is the overall portage carry from here to Smooth Water? Uh, we have 1.5 and 4.5. So six. Six one way. Then we'll be doing it three times. For a double carry. 18K. We have a solid hiking day. So this area is well documented. We have Jeff's map as well as our own maps, but we also have Hap Wilson's guidebook of Tomogamy, which really breaks down a lot of the routes here as well as a lot of the portages. On the right shore, there's just a little blip. Yeah. I think that's the access point. So we're at the Gamble Lake access point where uh, we started our trip when we went down the Lady Evelyn River. And this was the spot that uh, Francis from Smooth Water Outfitters dropped us off. And I just remember him pulling away off that road after dropping us off. It was the first time I ever got that feeling of like, oh shoot, we're out here. And just that feeling when they, when they leave you and all you've got is, is what's on you. It's cool being back here again. We arrived at Gamble Lake 
which is the end of the road for us on the Lady Evelyn River. All right, the start of something special right here. <laughs> on all the trips we've done over the years, it's always the headwaters and connecting different watersheds, which is always the toughest part. The portage symbol that we've been seeing on all our portages is a guy with a canoe, but on this one, it's a guy hiking. We're very lucky because it looks like this trail is maintained. There's a lot of camps around here that you would use these trails for the kids. There's a, a few big trees that have been cut down and it, it makes the overall route a lot more manageable. Oh yeah. Well, we get to put our paddles in the water for a second. Getting close to Sunny Water Lake. Very much looking forward to a swim. We've officially made it to Sunny Water Lake. Fun fact about Sunny Water Lake is that it's one of the clearest lakes in the district. And uh, they say you can see things shiny objects at the bottom of the lake that are like 25 meters deep. <laughs> Yo, you look so white. You look like a beluga whale. <laughs> the other big news here is that I, I think we're at one of the, the highest peaks of the, the, the trip and we're really crossing our fingers that it's, uh, that it's all downhill from here. But it is though, isn't it? It should be. There's probably going to be some uphills still. Claim you know. it though, claim it. Like we've reached the highest, it's all downhill from here. Yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna claim this. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is we've hit the highest point of the trip. We've got to the headwaters of the Lady Evelyn. We crossed over a mountain. We're in sunny water right now. I'd say it's all downhill from here. Five o'clock, and we still have three more portages to get to Smoothwater Lake. An 840, a 560, and a 95. Take a picture of this rock slick. We're getting to a lake that has the endangered aurora trout. This is the only section of our route where we're gonna see these guys. They're apparently endangered because of the amount of acid rain that used to be coming through this area, as well as rumors of an old trapper that used dynamite to catch these guys. So because of that, now it is considered a, a pretty rare fish that we're not gonna be fishing for on this trip. We're getting very close to the end of the day here and we are both gassed. Probably close to 20 kilometers of just walking and you know two thirds of that time would be with quite a bit of weight on your back. Woo! Damn man, I am freaking exhausted. I'm gassed too. It actually gets deep really fast. Nice.
what a day. We portaged for like 10 hours to get over a mountain to get to the smooth water lake. It feels so good to be here. But I think Alex and I, both of our bodies are just super tired. We, we didn't injure ourselves today. Nothing that incredibly sore right now. We're just totally gassed. Alex is making some dinner. I put up the tent. It's a tough route. Tomogamy is home to four of the largest peaks in Ontario. So there's a lot of elevation, a lot of up and downs. But you put in the work and then you get to places like this and it's beautiful. So it's always worth it. It's always nice at the end just to kind of sit and reflect and think about the day and what you have to come. I'm just being out here with my buddy Alex. We don't get to spend much time together and this is what we, we grew up doing together. So it's great to be out here doing what we love to do. In our old stomping grounds as well. Oh, it's kind of like stick to your, stick to your ribs kind of. Yo, that's another thing that just worked out. I was worried about, I figured we wouldn't have a fire tonight because I was like, I don't know if I have enough wood to actually sustain a fire. Look at this, we have dinner and we have a fire. <laughs> the work's not done yet. But at least we have to start our day with like a 5K paddle. Nice. On a beautiful smooth water lake as well. Yeah. How's your body feeling today? Pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I was talking about not being sore yesterday. Yeah. Well, because I just fell down a flight of stairs right now. <laughs> I hit snooze a couple times this morning. I was like, no, I can't. <laughs> For dinner tonight, we're going to be having a pad thai. And I have dehydrated tofu. And in the past, I've found it's really hard to rehydrate that stuff. It just becomes like a crispy, dense, zero moisture piece of food. And rehydrating it with the rest of the meal didn't seem to work that well. So I'm going to try a, a full day soak. In this Nalgene, I put the tofu as well as the vegetables and chicken in here. And throughout the day, the idea is that it'll all plump back to life and then I can just put it into the meal tonight. This is an experiment. I don't know if that's just gonna dissolve into a mush. We'll see. It's a big portage day today, similar to yesterday. As we work our way out of the headwaters of the Sturgeon River, yesterday and today should be our heaviest portage days of the trip. So we know we're not gonna get the full distance that we need, the 22K, but we're picking off a large portion of that 26 kilometers of portaging that we have. Look at the size of this big boy. Tomogamy is known for its old growth trees. I think this boy is one of them. You don't see them this big in many places in Ontario. Why don't you come with me for a little second here? We're gonna take a look at potentially one of the best lunches to ever be discovered while on the water. And that is the log jam. What we've got here is a fresh wrap smothered with just the perfect amount of peanut butter. Then you've got some healthy slices of Calabrese 
that's spicy on top. So these are gonna be, this is a bit of a variation. The classic is a regular log jam. This is gonna be a bit of a spicy log jam. So that's what we got here. Pretty excited. Cheers. Sorry, I drifted off there for a second. Salty, sweet, crunchy, soft. It's just a perfect little combo. We're stopping for a quick lunch on the side of this island. To our north is Ishpatina Ridge, which is the highest point in Ontario. There's a fire tower on it that they used to use back in the day to see if there's any forest fires in the area. Funny enough, we passed a group back there that said there was a forest fire to the north side of Ishpatina Ridge. And we're seeing water bombers and helicopters flying around. We're not seeing any smoke or we're not smelling any smoke but we're gonna keep an eye on that. There's a hike you could take to the top of the ridge. It's a bucket list item if you're in Tomogamy. I think we're gonna skip it today, but it is really tempting. I just, I don't know if we have enough time. So we're currently paddling down Scarecrow Lake and we happened by this island uh, with some older gentlemen on it who asked us wh where we were headed. And we said we were gonna head to Paul Lake and they said, no, you're not. And we're like, oh. And they, they said uh, that it's currently on fire. Now that's not the same information that we've heard from some of the camps that we've passed who have said that it's on the north side of the Ishpatina Ridge. So we're, we don't really know what to expect right now. We're kind of going to keep paddling forwards, keep our wits about us. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know that Paul Lake's on fire. I think that might be a little... We're not sure. You can see the smoke on their eyes in a bit. hard to see like is he trying to get our attention or something like you'll you'll come over here we've got something to tell you maybe they're just doing inventory <laughs> see who's out here this is wild i don't know what the play is here i don't know how a helicopter would communicate to us but he definitely saw us Are you seeing this? Oh, here they come. How would you interpret that? Like, are these guys like, yo, what is taking these guys so long to get the clue right now? We're trying to get them to paddle back up this way. The landing. The helicopters landed on the lake. So we're gonna go paddle over and see what's going on. They dropped something off. It looks like there's a human there. You see that? Good, how are you guys? Oh, we've been better. Oh, what's going on? So, there's a fire just over yonder. And there's a cabin just in that mouth right there. Yeah. And we have to get over there to set, uh, set some gear up. We have the helicopter coming back with a pump. Okay. Fuel, but we're trying to make our way over to shore. This is the only safest spot. 
spot to land. We couldn't tell if you guys were trying to get our attention. Oh, no, we were just checking, so we're looking around for values. Um, to set up sprinklers and whatnot on cabins and then just to see how many people were in the area and stuff it was like the third one and we were like i don't know that one was pretty close to us like is that like a, a sign oh uh, no he's just looking i think he might actually be inbound right now he's gonna probably drop another guy off okay um uh, so yeah i don't know if you, you guys might get blown around a little bit but we'll probably get out of here hey if we wanted to throw some gear on your boat could you guys bring it there for yeah us? of course yeah do you guys do you guys need a lift over? That would be fantastic. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you have to call me up. Yeah. Yeah. For one moment, you're gonna wait until we're off. The timing was impeccable, my man. Like, how aggressive can the fire be, and it'll help? Ah, uh, pretty good actually. Like, there's been instances where like these will be set up, and like the fire will roll over a cabin, and you'll just see like just a oh, great spot. One sec, one sec, one sec. Let's maybe put on the brakes a little bit here. Yeah. You can you can use any clips you want as long as uh, you know none of us are swearing at each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. make sure you guys look good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. we're, we're good at that at this point. Yeah. Hey, thanks, man. Hey, no worries. Appreciate it, big yeah. time. Yeah. Best of uh, best of luck out there. Yeah, thank you very Put much. There, thanks. No worries. Take care. Enjoy your, the rest of your trip. Yeah, thank you very much. That was a that was a new one for us out here. Definitely set us behind schedule a little bit, but I'd say the excitement was worth it. And the other, the other real benefit here is we got some uh, pretty key intel that we can continue on with our trip. It's crazy out here that news travels like broken telephone. And the guys at the last lake were panicking about Paul Lake being on fire. And it's not even close to Paul Lake. So it just goes to show you, take things with a grain of salt sometimes. With that being said, the sun is quickly setting. We are well behind schedule. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna see where we can get to today. Is this section on the map? Yeah. I don't know, like, we're probably not staying up, right? Like, we're probably eating one bed. Well, it's eight o'clock. We didn't get as far as we wanted to today, but we had that really cool experience with the helicopter. There's no campsites available on this lake, so we're we're camping on this portage. Tell ya, I'm gonna need a pretty big slug of bachelor juice to stay here tonight. Uh, we're gonna do our chores before the sun drops. Maybe have a slug of whiskey to get our spirits back up. We're gonna have a slug of whiskey. Yeah, we're gonna have a slug of whiskey. Yeah, we're going to. All right, buddy boy, now we gotta see if that tofu came back. Oh yeah, true. Let's see how this tofu rehydrated. First look, it looks like it absorbed a lot of the water that was in here. Still a little tough, but it's a way, it's way more rehydrated than 
if you straight just boil it with the with the pasta. Hmm, good to know. Yo, how'd you come up with this? Uh, Rachel found it online on like a backcountry recipe website. It's freezing this morning and we have wet socks and shoes to put on and Noah came up with the brilliant idea of throwing them in the, the bath water that we have here. The, the lake's still so warm, but the air is just really cold. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna test drive his theory. Yeah, my socks are already like 10 degrees warmer. <laughs> this is definitely a play. Yeah? Yeah. I actually feel like this warmed me up. Let's do it. It's 7.30 this morning. Generally, we've been starting at 8.30, so this is a, a good start for us. Will it mean that we end early? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> We're starting a bit earlier today, so we can bang off a 1500 meter portage right off the bat. Once we're done this, that's it for portages that are over a kilometer long. You can really smell the forest fire smoke in here. Makes you realize that a lot of the risk with forest fires could actually just be in the air quality. Talking to those guys yesterday, the forest fire is about 10 kilometers away and doubled in size. But today there's no wind and it's relatively cold. So hopefully this will help maintain the fire and stop the spread. Nice dude. Yo, that creek looks like it would have been a time. So you're saying we have 8K of paddling? 8K of paddling a river like this. We have officially gotten to the Sturgeon River and we have about eight kilometers of, I was gonna say portaging, of paddling until a portage, which is the first time in a long time. The confluence of the Sturgeon and whatever we were on is right behind us. So it's official and it feels good.
Yo, some of the great cats there? Yeah, yeah. Dude, it feels like... What does it got? Is it fighting? Yeah. Pickerel. Oh, we're in pickerel country. Frig, I do not remember the last pickerel I caught. Go away, little buddy. Nice, dude. A midday pickerel. Fish on. Nice. We figured out a tactic. Oh, baby. Fish? Yeah. Oh man, that looks like a good one. We're trying a new recipe today. Cheddar cheese and Nutella. I'm thinking it might taste like a chocolate cheesecake. <laughs> probably isn't convincing anyone. That <laughs> <laughs> no, looks really gross. <laughs> see a little guy sticking out? Oh, we see it. <laughs> I was waiting for the sideways head tilt. <laughs> uh, I'm into it. All right, sweet. I'm diving in. You get the chocolate taste first, and then the cheese comes in after. <laughs> it's kind of like two separate flavors in one. It's nice though. Sweet, and then bold. Nice man. Nice, clean. clean. The Sturgeon River has been pretty much a constant swift. Just enough water to get down. We're doing a lot of bumping and grinding. I've been feeling pretty tired today. I think it's just the aftermath of all the portaging. I think it's also, it might be the heat too. It's kind of looking tricky, eh? Yeah. Maybe the play is to go in from the water. The water, maybe. Buddy. Dude, is there someone up there? Is that just a bush? Oh yo! Rock bass! Oh, oh my god! We're on the final lake of the day. 7.30, 12 hour day again. The day always sneaks away from us. 
<laughs> We're averaging like 11 and a half hour days. <laughs> We're just looking for camp right now. We know there's two on this lake. Alex might have spotted one. We're gonna make a whiskey brulee. A throwback to the Aguaniche. A drink that was founded by Matty B. We've got whiskey. We've got a little bit of water. We have a three second Mio squirt of lemon Mio. I think it's normally made with the lime with electrolytes, but we are savoring that right now because it's been really hot days. So we're gonna use the lemon that does not have electrolytes. And then some of your local flora, which in this case is a sprig of cedar. Really good. <laughs> that last one tastes meaty. Oh no. I don't remember sleeping last night. Forgot to take my contacts out. Didn't bring stuff into the tent. Alex, your body sore? <laughs> my body's so sore. <laughs> Yesterday was a 12 hour day and we're about a day behind schedule. So today we need to get all the way down the Sturgeon River to Obabica River where we're gonna start going up. We're right here. Obabica Falls is here. It's about 40k. Our bodies are getting very sore. But every day is a new day. And it's a beautiful place to be doing this. Tamagami is an awesome spot. A wolf's chasing it. There's two wolves chasing it. Yo. Are you kidding me? Holy shit, that was wild. <laughs> oh my god. 
wow, that was a crazy experience. <laughs> that moose did not want anything to do with those wolves. No. We didn't hear anything until that moose was like crashing through the final section of, of, uh, of a forest here. It just shows how silent that entire pursuit was. <sighs> My heart's pounding. That was crazy. He hammered this. Oh. <laughs> Man, this guy was hungry. It's a beautiful fish. We're just getting to the end of this portage and I'm noticing a metallic sheen here on the rocks. If you look at this, you might think it's like a gasoline or a fuel product, but this is natural. This is manganese, which is a natural element in the soils here. A good way to test if this is manganese or like a, a nasty fuel product is how it looks. This, as you can see, has sharp edges and plates. And if I go to touch it, it breaks apart. If this was fuel, it would be all in one piece with very soft edges, and if you try to touch it, it would actually get sucked onto your finger. There's a marked portage, but we're trying to decide if we can line the boats down. I think we can shoot it out from those out in the middle. Just pull back in. Yeah? Good. Like this part's f like where are we going? Forward. Boy. Dude, that was That's a Nova Scotia classic right there. It's like you go down like a pinball and you kind of like use the rocks to kind of like work your way down. Dude, I just, I have such PTSD after wrapping that boat. Noah's got a fish. I think we got the biggest pickerel on of the trip. Yeah, that's a big boy. Barely have them hooked. Yo. Did somebody just grab it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh.
Yes, sir. Just stopping for a bite to eat on this portage. We've had a really good morning. We skipped a lot of the portages and just ran the sets. They're a little bony, but it's a lot easier than, than uh, doing the portage. This is our first time having Bannock on the trip. We rushed it a bit this morning, it was a little burnt but Bannock is so good on these trips, it's so dense. Back paddle. I was just gonna hold on for a sec. Want me to launch her out? That's how you get down the rapid. There you go. Or a waterfall, I should say. Yeah, that's a waterfall. Let's get our definition in order here. Tonight we're having falafels. You definitely want to keep it to size. You don't want to make them too big. I learned that on the trip with Rachel down the blood vein that they just fall apart. Couscous with raisins, spices, and pine nuts and dehydrated tomato. And then to top it off, all you need is a little tahini, and it is Mediterranean night here in the backcountry. Yesterday we had a really good day and we caught up to where we thought we'd be staying on night seven. We camped at Gooseneck Falls and we sort of thought we'd be somewhere on the Obabica River. Today we leave the Sturgeon River and start going up the Obabica River. As you can see, it's very windy, probably not a lot of current, but we leave the Obabica River and take a small blue line, Wawiagama Creek or Wawiagama River to Wawiagama Lake. We ran into a group a couple days ago who had some beta on this section. This two kilometers took them six hours. 
Apparently it can be a bit of a slog, very muddy. It would be a successful day if we get to Wawiagama Lake, but it looks like we have a lot of work to do that. At the bottom of the falls, there's an eroding sandbank. And generally, at the bottom of rivers, the finest grain material gets sent the furthest down river. Seeing the sand like this is an indicator that the river is slowing down in elevation. And this is more of a deposition area. All the sediment that's being flushed down river deposits here. But it's also, there's not a lot of structure. So these banks easily erode. And as the, the sand and, and, and loose material erodes out, the trees are falling down with it. It's very humid this morning. We're portaging around Obabica Falls and then we're gonna work our way upriver. Slowly working our way up the river. There's a consistent current, so we're really working for it. Oh. I reckon this might be it. Okay. Phase two. We've gotten to the confluence of the two rivers and this river that we have to go up now is a little smaller and a little more narrow than what we were on. I don't think we're going to be able to paddle it. It might be a walk job. I was, uh, I just looked and it is called a river, not a creek. So, I don't know. I feel like when, when it's a river, there's a little more water in it. I'm pretty happy just to see water in here. I didn't know how much uh, water we'd have and I was worried we wouldn't even be able to float the boat. It does seem like we might be able to paddle some of these sections, but we're constantly in and out. So we're just trying just straight walking right now. And uh, it, it seems to be working pretty well. One, two. One.
308. So now, like an hour. Hour, 10 minutes. Yeah. Nice. Did we just get five hours of time credits? <laughs> yeah, that's the <laughs> ultimate portage skip. Mine were dry last night, I think. Well, actually, I don't know if I took them off the line. You can tell the weather is shifting. We've been so lucky with the weather over the last week. But it looks like today we're going to get some rain and potentially some thunder and lightning. And we have <clears throat> about 30 kilometers of lake paddling on some of the larger lakes here. Obabica Lake, which we're on right now. And then cross over to Lake Tamagami, where we'll finish our trip in Sandy Inlet. A few days ago, I didn't think we'd be sitting so pretty today. We're so far behind schedule. Alex is on. What's the take so far? I don't know, like it, it feels decent, but it could just be like a, a good fighter. The bass. Oh, it's a big bass. It's a nice fish. It's been a while since I've got a bass that size. That's awesome. Dude! Double header! <laughs> what? Dude, this one's bigger! Oh, this no. one's bigger! No, oh. we're off! Okay. Holy shit, dude. The final portage of the trip, right behind me. 500 meters of the total 26 kilometers that this route had. We're gonna take it all in and enjoy every step. Yo, I think I put the canoe on top of my head and I ride this out. What? Is he okay? I didn't know chipmunks could swim. Some weather is rolling in on Lake Tamagami right now, and we're kind of being chased by it. 
We know that there could be lightning at some point. We have a couple big crossings here though that uh, we're gonna be pretty exposed on. So I'm gonna try to make quick work of those and get ourselves back close to shore just in case we need to pull off. We've arrived at camp for the day, five o'clock. By far our earliest arrival. We're not too far away from our access point where we're gonna be going to tomorrow, our final camp of the trip. So the plan was to have fish dinner, but throughout the entire trip, the fishing never really lined up with our dinner plans. So we're supplementing the fish with the meat that we've been having for lunch. So what we're doing is a meal that I've, I've been doing all summer with Rachel on the blood vein. Potatoes, vegetables, gravy, and meat. Comes together really nicely. Never tried it with cured meat like this though, but I, I, I can't see it not being good. Got up at five o'clock this morning to get off the site and start paddling really early. It's a long drive back to the city. This trip re-sparked my love for this area of Ontario. Tomogamy is truly a mecca of canoeing. Considering we ended up planning this trip pretty last minute, I feel like it checked off a lot of boxes. There was a lot of variety through the trip. We got to see a bunch of different rivers, a bunch of different topography. You know, the Lady Evelyn was so different than the Sturgeon, which is so different than the Obabica. On top of all, it was great to be back here with Alex, doing a trip just the two of us. And it's crazy to think how far we've come, both in life and in trips. At the end of the day, I think we're just a couple of dudes looking for adventure. And I think we came out here and we got adventure. <laughs>